Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 22. A current of 2 ampere flows through a 2 ohm resistor when connected across a battery. The same battery supplies a current of 0.5 amperes when connected across a 9 ohm resistor. The internal resistance of the battery is. So here we have two scenarios. So in the first scenario, the battery is connected to a resistor of 2 ohms and at this point in time the current that flows is I1 and that I1 is given as 2 amperes. In the second scenario the same battery is connected to a resistance of 9 ohms and this time the current that flows through the circuit is I2 which is given as 0.5 amperes. So we have to calculate the internal resistance of the battery. Now since this is the same battery therefore the EMF of the cell would remain the same. right? And let us assume that the internal resistance is small r. Now since it is the same cell so the EMF and the internal resistance will remain the same. Now in case 1 we can say that E is equal to I1 into capital R plus small r because E the net EMF of across the circuit will be equal to I1 into R that is the voltage drop across the external resistor plus the voltage drop across the cell because it has some internal resistance right. Now in this case also the expression would remain the same E is equal to I2 into capital R plus small r. Now let's put the values so E in this case will be equal to I1 is 2 amperes capital R is 2 ohms plus small r. In this case E will be equal to I2 is given as 0.5 amperes capital R is 9 ohms and this will be small r. Now looking at these two equations you see the left hand side is same. Right, left hand side is E in both the cases. Therefore, we can say 2 into 2 plus R is equal to 0 0.5 into 9 plus R or 4 plus 2R is equal to 4.5 plus 0.5R or we can say 2R minus 0.5R is equal to 4.5 minus 4 or this can be written as 1.5 R is equal to 0.5 or R is equal to 0.5 divided by 1.5 which is equal to 1 by 3 ohms. Therefore, the value of the internal resistance of the cell is 1 by 3 ohms. Question number 23. The mean free path of electrons in a metal is 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 meters. The electric field which can give on an average 2 electron volt energy to an electron in the metal will be in unit of volt per meter. So we basically need to calculate the value of the electric field. Now before that let us quickly see what do we mean by mean free path. So it is the average distance travelled by an electron between successive collisions. right? Now in this question energy is given as 2 electron volts right now how do we relate energy with voltage how do we relate them now we know that voltage is equal to energy per unit charge so that's the that's how we calculate voltage so in this case energy is 2 electron volt and voltage is and, and charge on an electron is E Right? So, 1 electron volt is what? It is basically 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power 19 joules. I mean, 10 to the power minus 19. So, in this case, this E and E will get cancelled because both the values are the same. It's 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. So, therefore, you are left with 2 volts. So, this is basically the potential here. So, we have calculated the value of the potential. Now, how is electric field related to potential? Electric field is the potential gradient that is change in potential with distance. So, this would be V by R. So, V is 2 volts and what is R? Mean free path which is 4 into 10 to the power minus 8. 
So this becomes equal to 0 0.5 into 10 to the power 8 volt per meter or you can say 5 into 10 to the power 7 volt per meter. So D is the right option. So you see these are some very basic things here uh, and these are also simple formula based. So if you know the relationship between various quantities like if you know how is electric field related to potential, how is potential related to energy. So if you know all of these it becomes very easy for you to approach these kind of problems. Okay, so now let's move ahead with question number 24. It says, see the electrical circuit as shown in the figure. Which of the following equations is a correct equation for it? So now this is a very simple and straightforward question. All you need to know is the Kirchhoff's loop law and how to apply Kirchhoff's loop law in a circuit. Okay, so here if you look at the figure, you see that I1 is flowing from E1. Here I2 is coming from this end. So how much current will flow across this capital R? It would be I1 plus I2 because I1 is coming from here. I2 is coming from here. So both of them would join together. So I1 plus I2 will pass through R. Now again when this I1 plus I2 comes here then I1 goes this side. Like it's, it's something like this. I1, I2 comes from here. I1 goes this side and I2 goes this side. So that's how the flow of current takes place in this circuit. Okay, so now let us first talk about, let's name the circuits. This is circuit 1, this is circuit 2. So we are just talking about the two small circuits. Okay, so for circuit 1, what would be the equation? Now again, let's apply the Kirchhoff's loop law steps. First step is assume a direction. So let's say that this is my assumed direction. Okay, perfect. Now some of the EMFs, so in right now we are talking about circuit 1. So some of the EMFs, how many EMFs do we have? Just one which is E1, whether it will be plus or minus. So if you see, look at the assumed direction, it leaves from the positive terminal of the cell. So this would be positive. This is equal to the product of the current and respective resistances. So one resistance here is capital R. How much current is flowing through it? I1 plus I2. So this would be I1 plus I2 into capital R. But whether it will be plus or minus, you see the direction of current flowing through capital R is along the assumed direction. So this would be plus. Perfect. There is one more resistance in this circuit which is R1. And the current flowing through R1 is I1. So it would be I1, R1. Whether it will be plus or minus. So you see the current flowing through R1 is in this direction and assumed direction is opposite to this. So this would be minus I1, R1. Right? So what, what would be my equation? So my equation for circuit 1 would be E1 minus I1 plus I2 into capital R plus I1 R1 is equal to 0. Okay. Okay. So here you see what we did was that this was just a mistake because the assumed direction is like this. Correct. So the assumed direction and the direction of I1 is the same. So this would also be plus. Correct. So when it comes this side then it becomes minus. So please make note of these small things because generally by applying Kirchhoff's loop law, we make mistakes with the uh, sign convention. Right. So here it is I E1 minus I1 plus I2 into R minus I1 R1 is equal to 0. So if you compare it with the options given here, you see that A is the correct option. Right. Okay. Now let's move ahead with questions. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.